The market was pretty choppy today, but we have some giant things to cover. Marijuana stocks are exploding right now on big news from Biden. We're definitely going to talk about this because these marijuana stocks are popping up like 30% and they are just squeezing. And we're also set for a big day in the market tomorrow on important jobs data, we should say. But either way, we have some giant things to cover heading into tomorrow. These stocks are going crazy. Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, Mike, those marijuana stocks are getting really high tonight. And yes, that was a pun there for anybody wondering. But yeah, Tilray is on fire, Mike. There's a lot of marijuana stocks going up, whether it's Tilray, CGC, uh, the ETF MJ. I know a lot of people like to watch MSOS as well. That was up 33%. Uh, Mike, I kind of like MJ, which is a pretty good ETF. But nonetheless, the big news and the big reason why these stocks are going up is because Biden is actually pardoning, pardoning thousands of people who have federal offenses uh, for simple marijuana possession charges. Now, keep in mind, this is only prior federal offenses of simple marijuana possession charges. So it's not like, you know, if uh, if you got caught selling it or anything like that, that's obviously not being pardoned. It's just simple possession charges. So Keep that in mind. It's also going to pardon uh, people who were in the District of Columbia whenever they got arrested too. And But Mike, the big thing for me, even bigger than the pardonings, is honestly that he instructed the Secretary of Health and Human Services to review how marijuana is classified under federal drug laws. Now, I know a lot of people have been very angry that marijuana is classified in such a weird way under uh, under the U.S. laws. If we look right here, Marijuana is under is a Schedule One drug. This is up here with heroin, uh, uh, peyote. I know a lot of people don't know what that is, but it's a very weird one. Uh, but heroin, I mean, why why would it be up there with that? It's up here with ecstasy. It's kind of insane, you know. Considering a lot of states have legalized it and a lot of people use it, it's just a very crazy scheduling here. So hopefully they can get that fixed, Mike. But nonetheless, those stocks are going crazy, and yeah, Tilray. 30%. I mean, what a move. Exactly. So the reason these marijuana stocks are flying is one, when you have the president mentioning anything in your industry, it's normally pretty good, but there's just a ton of regulation when it comes to the cannabis industry right now. So like some of the most popular cannabis stocks are TLRY, CGC. Um, there's a couple other ones right now, but there's just so many regulations where it makes it very hard for these businesses to truly flourish you can say and as biden was saying where they are looking to review how marijuana is classified under federal law you know if they bump it down from a schedule one drug to maybe a schedule two schedule three or something like that it can be really good for these marijuana businesses so that's why they're booming but tom i mean <laughs> one of my favorite stocks heading into tomorrow is actually tilray so it's tlry you have to check out a daily chart on this one. This one has a wild, wild past, and it is a volatile one. So years and years ago, I'm gonna zoom out all the way back on my chart, all the way back to 2018, Tom, all the way back to 2018, this stock went from like $25 a share all the way up to $300 a share, and it just moved in a crazy way, and it has had other notable run-ups in the past, like in early 2021. The stock exploded. It went from like uh, $10 all the way up to 66 So when these marijuana stocks run, they tend to really run, and they happen over like weeks and months. This is a pretty decent catalyst, so I'm really watching Tilray and these other marijuana stocks. Yeah, definitely, Mike. Tilray looks amazing, It's and it's up 30%. Like, what a big move, and we actually just had earnings a couple days ago on Tilray as well, so we don't even have to worry about that coming up over the next few days either. So it's great to see that Tilray is running up like that, Mike. It has a lot of momentum. One of my favorite marijuana stocks is PLNHF, and I know Tilray is one of the more popular ones, so I figured I would try to get one that isn't really as popular. Now, keep in mind, PLNHF is kind of like a penny stock here. It's only $1.50 at the moment. It was a lot higher, though, last year whenever it was up at highs. But nonetheless, PLNHF is actually based in the United States, and they are the world's largest dispensary, uh, especially with their Las Vegas location, which is 40,000 square feet. That's actually 
pretty insane for a dispensary like that. But nonetheless, Mike, they have a lot of momentum too, 28%. And then, you know, I also figured I'd mention the MJ ETF because this one comprises a lot of different stocks and honestly would probably be the safer move if you wanted to buy and hold, you know, a company that would move with marijuana. For sure. So with these marijuana stocks, they are crazy. They are extremely, extremely risky, but they move in a giant way, you know? So like if you have like if, if you're willing to take on risk, there's a lot of reward with them, but there's also a really good chance they can dump. So you have to keep that in mind. But right now it's like, to me, these marijuana stocks are in an early stage of what appears to be a nice uptrend. There's a big catalyst on the line. Uh, looks like Biden's really trying to get this news in, in this uh, event pushed right ahead of midterms, you know, so there's definitely potential for these stocks to run up and they're going to be on my watch list very closely. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that with the midterms. I think that's actually a pretty big, uh, pretty big deal. And maybe a big reason why they're doing this at the time that they are, because, you know, they probably need some help right now, especially with that bad OPEC news over the past couple of days, it's going to maybe send gas prices higher. So we'll have to see how those midterms end up playing out, Mike, but yeah, great news for the marijuana stocks. And I love this Tilray chart. They bounced just right around that $3 support. And what I really like is it kind of broke $3, Mike, for a couple days, probably shook a lot of people out. And now we get the good news, of course. You know, it always happens to play out that way, doesn't it? <laughs> so true. All right. So another stock or yeah, another stock I'm watching is GLD. I know I talked about this one a little bit earlier in the week. Um, basically, as the dollar falls, that's really good for gold and silver. Um, basically, GLD has been performing very it's been very mediocre this year uh gld tends to run over the course of multiple weeks and multiple months and i think that we're setting up for a good uptrend on it um again this isn't necessarily like a supposed to be like a day trade tomorrow op before open or anything like that it's more so of a setup i'm watching over the next couple of days and it is to the upside but it really depends on how the dollar moves yeah, exactly. That dollar is kind of starting to move back up a little bit, isn't it? Look at how high it ended up getting today. And on that daily chart, it looks like the dollar is starting to move back up. Hopefully that ends up being a little bit of like a dead cat bounce there. That would definitely help out gold if it started to fall back. But one of my uh, other favorites today, Mike, uh, that actually had a, good, a lot of good momentum on a day where a lot of stocks were down is W-Y-N-N -N or WIN. And they operate a lot of casinos and stuff like that. And they've been moving off of great news out of uh, coming actually out of China regarding Macau. Apparently, they're going to be uh, able to transport people in from mainland China into Macau, which apparently makes up for a, 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 a large number of that gaming revenue over there. So it's really good news. A lot of these casino stocks are up. It's not just win, but win is my favorite up 2.76%. Whenever you go intraday, you can really see how strong it was, especially compared to the SPY, which honestly was pretty lackluster today. Yeah, lots of choppy movement on the SPY. Uh, one other stock that's close on my watch list is DUK. This stock was also on my watch list yesterday. It is an oversold setup that, in my opinion, fell too much too quickly. I still have not made a move on it, but it's really close on my watch list. Uh, I just really think the selling pressure will cool off. So I'm looking at like a short put play or maybe even like a long call play, depending on uh, the movement over the next couple days. Um, so I just want to share with everyone, it's down a ton, which is, uh, it's down a lot more than it's been in uh, a while in terms of like the past couple weeks. Yeah. And that's a pretty extravagant move to the downside. Honestly, that's, that's almost straight down like a big jackknife. And you can see in the past, sometimes when it has those big moves down, it'll start to consolidate. And then, you know, obviously start to not fill the gap, but, you know, kind of fill that knife back to the upside. So hopefully we start to see that happen because it's been pretty parabolic to the downside, especially as a lot of other energy stocks like Zom and others are starting to pop up. And that's actually my other favorite stock today is Zom. So Zom is on a huge run. I know I talked about Oxy earlier in the week, but figured I'd mention these oil stocks, Mike, because they are continuing to go up and Zom broke out up above $100 today, which I thought was going to maybe pose as a decent resistance. But, you know, we're still seeing crude oil futures start to fly up and yeah, there's crude oil actually closing up around highs today, right at close. So definitely getting those parabolic moves back up. Not good for gas prices, but good for ExxonMobil, though. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. And, you know, definitely bad for those midterms like we talked about, too. True. All right, Tom. So why is tomorrow important for the stock market? There's a lot of uh, choppy movement going on, but it's probably not going to be like that tomorrow. Yeah, the SPY is really consolidating. There's a bit of a gap here on the SPY between 370 all the way down to 368 or 367. I know a lot of people have been asking, are we going to end up gapping down and filling that through or, or are we going to gap up? And, you know, the main thing is going to be, Mike, with these uh, unemployment numbers coming out tomorrow, we are going to have the non-farm payrolls, which is always very important. That's obviously a big number. But then we're going to have the unemployment rate for September, which is also going to be huge. So be aware, guys, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time is when this is going to happen, right before uh, market open. So be aware. You're probably going to see some pre-market action, and hopefully it's to the upside, Mike. But I'll tell you right now with the way the SPY closed, it's definitely pointing down. So I am a little bit worried, but we need those jobs numbers to still hold steady. But honestly, if they hold steady, the market might still fall because then that means the feds can keep raising rates. So we're going to have to see how this one plays out. I think this is just a total coin flip here. <laughs> True. Like tomorrow is going to be so weird in that sense because like the market, you don't want to see the unemployment rate skyrocketing because it's like that, that's obviously a bad thing. But at the same time, the market does not want to see like the unemployment rate like too, too low because then the Federal Reserve can just have the green light to keep hiking rates at like a really high pace, which would just slow the market down and hurt stocks and, you know, destroy bonds as well. So it's weird, but tomorrow will be important because it'll just be, you know, basically anytime you have an unemployment rate reading, it's just important because jobs and employment is just such a key uh, factor of the economy overall. Yeah, it really is. And the feds always take a look at those numbers. And that's, I think, the main reason why we see these movements. And, you know, Mike, I know a lot of big banks are going to be watching these numbers as well, because obviously, you know, all these institutions and stuff like that are always trying to stay a step ahead. So we're probably going to see some volatility early on. And who knows, Mike, maybe some of those uh, maybe some of those bots or some of those algos might end up trading the market in a crazy way. Like I said, expect that pre-market price action. And I know in pre-market, sometimes we see some crazy moves. So definitely be on the lookout tomorrow. It's going to be a, a crazy one, especially after the spy was read today. Definitely not good heading into it. No doubt. If you guys are new to the channel and you like our videos, make sure to subscribe. You'll see our videos more often. And of course, it's free. But Tom, let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. With the first one, we have Zoom to the upside. Yeah, ZM, nice move up. Almost like a triple top here. Make them break out above 78.75. If they break that in pre-market, then look at 79. All right, with the next one, we have SWBI also to the upside. Smith & Wesson, nice to see this one coming back a little bit. Make them break above 1050. And with the last one, we have AMD, which is sinking in after hours. Yeah, this is insane, Mike. We had some insane news come out with this one. But yeah, go ahead and make them break down below $64.50, which is a huge support there. But they are going parabolic here, Mike, on some insane news here. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. They actually came out and they... uh. They actually lowered their revenue forecast, which is insane. They slashed uh, $1 billion from their forecast, which is pretty big. And they said the PC market weakened significantly. I'm seeing a lot of terrible reports coming in, Mike. This is definitely not good news for AMD. So watch for that move back down. But what I will say is it's already coming back. So watch for that volatility. Yeah, it's a wild one. <laughs> no doubt about that. So we are watching AMD for potential day trade to the downside tomorrow, only if it breaks below the level Tom listed. And then we are watching SWBI and Zoom for potential day trades to the upside tomorrow, only if they break above the levels Tom listed. Before we move on, we want to give a giant shout out to today's member of the day, Rick Sanchez. You've been pretty active. You've been in the chat for over two, over two years now. So keep up that activity. It's awesome having you in the chat. Uh, but we also want to say, if you're not in the Stocked Up Discord chat already, join up. It's completely free. And we were like basically on point with the news today with the marijuana news. So Tom, right as the marijuana news came out, Tom was on top of it and alerted everyone in the discussion chat about how they were moving. And we also have a popular news bot, which is completely free, which tells you news quicker than 
basically like anyone else. It combines a bunch of data sources and posts it right to you for free, basically instantly. And shortly after this happened, marijuana stocks started to blast up and you get access to a bunch of other great news and you can network with amazing people. It'll be that first link in the description and the comments down below. Tom, I'm very excited for tomorrow. Do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, it's going to be a huge day, Mike. These marijuana stocks are going insane, like Tilray, CGC, PLNHF. I just cannot believe all that insane movement. I hope that this starts a big uptrend like we've been talking about. And with stocks being so low right now, it's looking pretty tempting to buy. You know, you look on that daily chart, like on Planet 13 here, bouncing right off of that $1 support. That's definitely a pretty big psychological level there. You go look at Tilray uh, bouncing off of support, which it's been at tons of times over the past few months, right around $3. So definitely some big levels here and a lot of momentum. So let's see it keep keep going here. And honestly, we need that SPY to, to end up popping up. You know, we need those jobs numbers to help the market go back to the upside. Like we said, it's going to be a very strange event though. So probably going to be a coin flip. Like I said, I'm not going to uh, try to pick a direction on this one too in, too in depth. You know, I'd rather save that for a nice FOMC meeting. <laughs> there we go. Um, again, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. We post brand new videos every single day, and let's end the week strong.